Coming up, we'll be on location at CORE Counseling in Washington, D.C., discussing the benefits of relationship therapy and how it can help improve the issues that so many of us deal with, whether it's for couples, families, or even our professional relationships. With one of this area's top psychotherapists, Priya Kaur Tahim. Welcome, Priya, back to the Top Doctors Interviews program. We're excited to have you on again today. Thank you for having me. All right. We talked about anxiety and depression in a previous interview. In this interview, we're going to touch on relationships and relationship therapy because so many people in society have issues in their lives, whether it's their professional relationships, family, mm -hmm. spouse, parents, children, and different relationships can be affected. And you specialize as well in relationship therapy. Mm -hmm. So that being said, can you tell us about some of the most common relationship issues that you see in your patients? Yeah, so if we're going to focus on romantic relationships, I think a lot of the more common issues are lack of intimacy, the lack of connection, or lifestyle changes, which kind of change the dynamic of the relationship, um, communication issues. And what can cause some of these issues to kind of creep up into our relationships? So as humans, we each have our own way of reacting, understanding, and processing. So when you're bringing two individuals together, um, a lot of times you don't, you don't know how to connect with your partner on, on that deeper level in terms of like understanding why they think a certain way or, how, or what prompts them to think that way. So really trying to understand your partner's perspective. And oftentimes you see that that's what causes the shift in the relationship is because there's a lack of understanding or a misunderstanding. That's a great point because I think really understanding each other to see the perspective of either your spouse or whoever your relationship is with really can help you get a perspective on what they're thinking and really help you communicate in a better way as well. Mm -hmm. So some of these issues can evolve over time, uh, you know, arguments, just not seeing eye to eye on certain aspects of our lives. Um, what are some of the impacts that these issues can have in our lives over time? I know they can get really severe. So uh, if you're unhappy at home, it's going to be really hard to be happy or joyful or experience any of those positive emotions outside of the home as well. Or you're seeking that joy from unhealthier places. Like a lot of people can resort to like drinking or getting that thrill from another avenue. And so the impact can be detrimental over time, not only to your like physical health, but also to the relationship. And we know, uh, Priya, that different people have different relationships. Uh, they can be, whether it's a parent-child or it's a romantic relationship. What is the evaluation process that you go through with your patients to really understand and put together the best treatment option for them? Yeah, um, so it definitely varies depending on the, the, the duo that comes into our office, but I'll just focus on romantic partnerships for right now. And what that looks like is we do the first session um, intake together and we'll go over the relationship history, what brought them in, what are their expectations and goals. And then I personally like to see each individual within that couple um, one time so I can get to know their personal background and figure out what it is that they're seeking and then use that as a way to kind of tie in through our work together, like their strengths and weaknesses and um, really addressing their individual need within the partnership. What I really love about your practice, Priya, is that it's patient-centric, so you really devote the time to each patient mm -hmm. to really understand what they're going through. It's not like some of the bigger practices, unfortunately, in society where they don't give the time that's necessary, especially when it's related to mental health. Mm -hmm. You really need to understand what that individual is going through, and that can only be done by spending the appropriate amount of time with that person. Yeah, it was definitely something that I was big on that we don't want that cookie cutter approach, we want the individual approach. What are some of the most effective strategies that you utilize or implement to help these relationships? So I definitely would say learning to communicate um, in a way that's not rushed, so really learning to slow down our communication, learning to listen and not respond. Um, so when you're having a conversation with someone, do you listen to respond or do you listen to understand? 
Oh, that's a great question. I think a lot of people listen to respond. Yep. <laughs> they don't really listen, in other words, they're already thinking of their answer, right? Yeah, and so that that's something that I really try to work on with my couples is we're not listening to respond, we're listening to understand. And then you can ask a question to clarify if you don't understand where your partner is coming from. And then the other strategy that's really big is learning your partner's love language. So we all operate differently, and which means we all receive love differently. So you can be giving love to your partner all day long, but unless it's in their love language, it's hard to receive that. That's a great point, Priya. What kind of results are your patients seeing? And I again understand that it varies depending on patient to patient and what they're going through, mm -hmm. but on the average. Yeah, so I mean, I will say that not all couples stay together, and if that's the case, we work on learning to uncouple in a healthy way. Um, but that during that intake process, we try to set goals. And so, if some people want to learn to get on the same page about having kids or same page about finances, we typically get there. But it really does take the individual and the couple to invest. So again, we can talk all we want in our 45 and 55 minutes together. But unless you're applying that outside of the session, that's, that's really going to be determining how successful you are. Yeah, so that's a great point as well. The, the couples have to be motivated, individuals working toward the same cause, the same goal mm -hmm. to resolve their issues. If one of them is not engaged or really motivated, then I don't see the results working because you have to all be on the same page, right? It's like a true partnership between yourself and the couple that you're working with. Yeah, and one thing that I, I try to do in my specific style is if I see one individual kind of struggling or might need a little bit more like one-on-one -on -one time, I'll, I'll offer them an individual session to see what, what it is that they're needing in order to kind of give back into the relationship or like how to kind of get on the same page as their partner. And how many sessions are typically necessary? And I, again, preface this that it varies based on what they're going through and each situation is unique, but in general. Um, so I would say definitely with couples, I would recommend a minimum of six to eight months. And that doesn't mean every week. I typically say couples come in every other week um, so they can practice the skills that we're using. Um, but I've also had couples that come in once a month and then I don't see them for six months and then they come back in for that one-off session. So it really just depends. And that's what I love about our approach at Core Counseling is that we keep that door open in case somebody needs to come back for a check-in. And for couples that may not have experienced those issues yet, is there a strategy or approach that you can recommend that can help prevent these issues from occurring? Yeah, I mean, I love it when couples come in and there's no real issues on the table, but they're just being proactive. Um, one big strategy I use is doing check-ins. So doing a weekly check-in with your partner can help set the tone not only for the week, but also making sure that you're addressing needs that might be coming up. And for some advice to couples watching out there, <laughs> What are some of the keys to building strong, healthy relationships? Definitely continue to date each other. Um, just because you're in a committed relationship doesn't mean you can't experience that like excitement of dating. So dating is really, really important, even after you get married and have kids. Um, the other thing is like those check-ins are really important. Um, if there's something on your mind, making sure that you're taking the time to express that to your partner so that way there's avoidance of any buildup or tension or resentment that might come up. That's great advice. It can really help a lot of folks as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And on that note, Priya, I want to thank you again for providing this very informative interview that can help so many people and strengthen so many relationships out there and hopefully lower the divorce rate as well. <laughs> thank you for having me.